Well, good morning everybody. This is Dear Mama Sal. Who else would it be driving my car at this time of the morning? Um, and I have Laurie al alongside with me. Camera nearly fell off. It's minus one here in Canada, which would be translated into 31, 30 degrees over the line. It's chilly. Very chilly. Um, Laurie is with me. She's going to borrow the car today. And um, so it is a weird sort of day. Just wanted to give a big uh, heads up to all of you who on hearing about Robin's on again, off again teeth. Um, automatically responded with, well, why don't we fundraise? And that is sort of typical of the sort of mentality that I love about the Dear Mama Cell viewers. And I just wanted to put a note of caution out there before we do it. I'm not saying we're not going to do it. I just want to put out a note of caution because once we fundraise for one person, you understand, <laughs> we'll be fundraising for everybody. And so, um, We've got to give this a bit of thought. I'm delighted to say that I think it was Patty, Ashley, and one other who I can't remember right now. <gasps> They're gonna kill me. Anyway, I can't remember who the third person is, but forgive me. Um, I'm sure you will own it very quickly for me. Um, that came that immediately came back and funnily enough it also went through my mind which is why don't we go through Fundly and raise the money and Ashley's been doing some great research for us and I really appreciate it Ashley because my big concern is if we're going to do it let's do it right and I don't know enough about Fundly to do it right yet and so Ashley's been doing a little bit of uh, research and some of what she's found out is that we can actually have we can actually be raising money for more than one person at the same time in other words we can have different pages to the dear mama Sal fundraising type area in fundly now we like that the other thing that i'm really concerned about is if we for example raise money for one then Will people feel slighted if we can't raise the same sort of money for another? Uh, do you know what I'm saying, Lon? Yes. Yeah, so, um, so that to me is a concern. And do we, and I need your feedback on this, guys, because, you, you know, it's going to be our thing. And so we need our input on it. Um, do we do this in in a way that is um, first come first serve. Um, I know for a fact that um, when we talked about Robin's teeth, Sharon also reacted to this as well because she apparently has got similar problems because of her illnesses. Uh, and then I've had other people who've come in and said, wow, wait a minute, if you are sick have dental issues because of an illness then it actually is covered in the United States in some way so what I want to make sure we do is that we have two things going on number one is that we have some good research into how we do it how we set it up uh, the other thing is that we have the resources to be able to advise us as to is this the only way it can get done in other words we don't want to be fundraising if we can get this done another way for free now, I'm pretty sure from all I know about Robin if there's any way of getting this for free she would have found it by now that's my sense <laughs> but I could be wrong <laughs> um, so What I'm worried about, though, is that we make this fair and equal and unbiased 
so everybody feels equally valuable and equally cared for would be my thing hold on one second all right so um I'm not quite sure where all the loopholes are in this, but I have something in the back of my mind is going red flag. And so I want to be aware of pluses and minuses. I've asked Ashley to have a look at if we raise money, can we send it directly to a... For example, can we send it directly to a bank or can we send it directly to a dentist can we send it directly in other words that we make sure that the money we raise goes directly for the purpose that we intended it um, that to me would be very important now I'm not saying that Robin would use it for anything else or Sharon or anybody else that we raise money for but I want to make sure that we are seen to be doing our due diligence in this in, in all areas the other thing is this um, at the moment I am not in a position to be dear mama Sal the broadcaster and dear mama Sal the fundraiser at the same time although I can obviously give lots of shout outs on the vlogs um, I you know I am really concerned about there will be an expectation on me to actually raise this money and I don't have the time to be doing that as well at the moment as you know I've got rather a lot going on in my life at the moment so having said all of that I think it's a phenomenal idea and I hope that you don't hear what I'm saying as a negative it's all I'm Laurie will tell you I'm a risk manager in in lots of ways and the first thing I look at whenever I see a project is what can go wrong rather than what can go right and the things that go right are the easy things and one of the things that um, why I always love to bra brainstorm with Benji is because he will always go okay so what do you see because he knows I will see things from a different perspective um, and it's not that I I want it to be negative, it's about I want to be balanced. Too often in my life I've gone off on um, ideas full of piss and vinegar and really you know, Pollyanna and then been shot down with not having thought it through enough at the get-go. And so I really appreciate uh, Ashley just came up immediately and started uh, asking me almost, you know, what do you need, what do you need? Um, and I really thank you for that, Ash. That's, that's like a team. I also said to somebody, um, do you want to be part of the fundraising subcommittee? And so I'm looking for people who want to do that, who will work together and, and form uh, like a committee who who will look after the ins and outs of doing something like this, uh, a group of you. So that not one person has, I, because I also think a group of us would have to agree that this was a worthy cause, a group of us would need to, you know, um, agree that X percent of the money that we've raised should go in this direction and X percent should go in that direction. So it's going to need um, unless we do it in order, in priority order. In other words, the first person uh, up is the first person we raise money for, and we don't stop until we've raised that amount of money, and then we move on to number two. Ooh, nasty accident there! Aren't we lucky? Thank you, God. Um, anyway, so give it lots of thoughts, everybody, because it's a great idea. It's a great idea, and um, 
Now, somebody this morning made a comment that also rang a bell in my head as well, and they said something about that we'll be raising money for the dear Mama Sal peeps. And then I went, wait a minute, I can hear people say, just for our peeps? What about our family and friends? So again, um, how wide a net do you want this fundraiser to cover? Is it just going to be for Dear Mama Sal peeps or is it people that Dear Mama Sal peeps consider to be more worthy or worthy? And the reason I say that is I cannot imagine certain people in the Dear Mama Sal network uh, wanting to raise money for themselves but I can imagine them wanting to raise money to try and help somebody else. And so we need to decide on that. So if anybody else can think of any questions that need to be answered before we take steps forward, um, let's have them out there, because the more questions we can get out there in terms of what do we do, uh, the better. And then what I will do is I'll put all those questions into a very famous Dear Mama Sal questionnaire. And I'll put it up on the Google Drive um, so that people can vote. The same as we did with the balance survey. And so you can all get to vote and uh, make your own decision. Now obviously some people are going to watch this vlog way after <laughs> we have voted and probably raised our first amount of money. Um, so what I will need to do is um, make sure I put a timeline on the vote so that people know if you are watching this or you're going to the vlog um, past a certain date. Uh, we've already closed this voting process. Yeah, that would be a good idea as well. All right, so our thought for the day is it is cool. Minus one now. We're heading in the wrong direction, right? Um, yes. We seem to be. Nasty. Sitting in the driveway, it was zero, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And now we're up higher. Oh, I suppose that's understandable. If we're higher, it'll be cooler. Right. Oh, we like that. Okay. So, um, but as Laurie so correctly said, this has been one of the nicest Januaries we've had. We've had very little rain. We've had, so far, <gasps> they built a whole community down there. Yeah. They build the community, then they move the trees. <laughs> so yeah. they, they build the community, then they move the trees, so you can see what they've done. Yeah, um, there's a, and and look, if you look over this side, Laura, mm -hmm. just any minute now. I was talking about it in my vlog yesterday. I'll talk about that community and the trees just now. Um, but if you look on this side, just before the gas station, I think it is. Um, forget that. It's where the screen. Yep, they've taken that whole area down. Have a look at how big that place is and how many houses are they going to fit in there at 750,000 at a time. So they took some more wildlife homes away? Oh, it looks like it was a development already. It looks like it went? It was already a development that they moved down. Yeah. Okay. So, um, anyway, so the other development, and they've taken this building down. You remember this one that they've been trying to rent forever? It used but to be the Surrey Public Market. The Flea Market, yeah. Oh. Yes, and it was a public market, then a flea market, then a goodness knows what market. Anyway, so what we were laughing about about the community and the trees is that there was uh, a very big lot that has been developed and all the time they were developing it they kept all the big trees on the perimeter. So you actually couldn't see what they were up to. And sadly, now that they have finished it, they've taken down the trees, and now what you look at is this huge development that they have done. It. And in a way, that's really sad, because it was pretty not seeing all those houses. Mm -hmm. So I wonder why they had to mow down the trees. Had to be a reason, I guess. Anyway, <coughs> but we both... Uh, 
remarked on it because it's obviously they've just done it because not used to seeing that view but this whole community is down the bottom of a valley and everything in my gut feels says I wouldn't want to be at the bottom of that valley when it rains I know. <laughs> and I don't mean regular rain, I mean when it rains. That's right. Which we have known it to do. Um, we had rain so heavy once that where I live, there was so much water coming off my roof that there was a waterfall into my front deck and I was bailing my front deck to stop it coming into my living room. Uh, my deck is on first level and I, literally I was bailing water out of it because the runoff couldn't cope. So when I rebuilt the deck due to other reasons, I had to rebuild the deck, I put a dirty great four inch gap at the bottom of the wall so that would never be an issue again. <laughs> we just think, and whoever originally built my house built the front deck to be a swimming pool. The runoff was like an inch and a half, two inches higher up than the level of the deck. So you had to actually get that much water into the deck before it started to run off. Very intelligent. No comments about the fact it was obviously designed by a man. Um, but, um, <coughs> you know, I, I, I'm not any sort of an engineer, but even I worked out that maybe that wasn't a very good idea. So, thought for the day. What should we concentrate on today? Yesterday was volunteer day. And by the way, a nice uh, comment from Charlotte, who told me that she's been uh, volunteering at Ronald McDonald House for uh, quite a while now. I think she said a couple of years, uh, or at least a year. No, I can't remember. Anyway, but she does like two four hour shifts every weekend. What a good thing to do. I bet you she feels good about that. I cannot imagine that you can't feel good if you do that. So good on you there, Charlotte. I'm pleased to hear it. Uh, she also gave me an update on Sarah Beth. Um, and she says she's doing fine, but what she was going to do was just to drop a note with Sarah Beth to uh, let her know that I'd asked after her. Um, so she'll give us some feedback, or Sarah Beth will, one or the other. I've heard nothing back from Jesper or Anna Mette. I have heard nothing back from our Emily who's in California yeah um, and who else have we been trying uh, how many non-smoking days uh, I don't know uh, ah. January 4th I quit January the 4th and today is the 21st right that's a good couple of weeks and some good for you and how are you feeling Oh, good. Yeah. Not crawling the walls? Um, no, I don't crawl the walls. I, I had a day on a weekend where I had that kind of day, but that was my first one. And then I just have little spurts. It's usually in the evening or when I'm laying in bed and I can't sleep. Yeah, and you go, I really could do with a cigarette now. Yeah, because I'm bored. Because I'm bored. Yeah. yeah, it's, you know, I wish I could tell you otherwise, but, you know, a year later, I still have that. I've known you 24 years, as it turns out, and I've never seen anybody struggle the way you always have when you've, you know, even when, I know you've quit smoking, but when you've attempted before, I swear to God there's something else besides the nicotine that you're... Yeah, that's what Laurie's saying, is that she's, she's watched me give up smoking many, many ways, and um, that... I mean, I've had doctors say to me that I must be um, addicted to something more than more than the nicotine because they were putting me on drugs that you you put heroin addicts on. You know? But you know, this time was different. I've got to say that. No, I know you you were determined. I just I'm still watching you, and it it affects you. When, 
when um, well, you've done great. anybody has been as dick, you know, been addicted as long as we have, I guess. Um, when you give up, that it's going to have strange effects. I guess I don't know if it's strange effects. I wonder whether the cigarettes don't mask the real effects. Absolutely. And I'd like to say, because I'm proud of myself, I have also lost two pounds in the process. Wow, that's pretty good going. So... Because I'm determined not to put my weight back on. Yeah. Because otherwise it's, to me, pointless. So, I know not to the non-smokers out there, but... Yeah, it's a horrible one. Actually, I didn't put the weight on for the longest time. I didn't, I mean, I, I might have put a couple of pounds on, I can't remember now. I seem to remember I put sort of what I call Christmas type pounds on, like yeah. four or five. I didn't put a lot of pounds on and then I don't think I put the big pounds on for about nine months. So obviously the stress was starting to hit and I... Mm -hmm. I did that. So good for you. So very, very important. Um, I noticed that there are, I think it's Manon and Jen and Leslie are still doing the 10 minute challenges, which is great. Um, and I must say that last night I was just about to go to bed and I went, no, I've got to do my 10 minute challenge, so guys, I didn't put it up on Facebook, but I am telling you this morning, I did do my 10 minutes last night. Is that what all the noise was that I could hear in my room? Were you in your bathroom? Or in your closet or something? It was quite banging. Okay. Um, and so I also picked up um, Andrew's blanket and tried to do a bit more of that. I'm trying to get that blanket finished. And I'm afraid that when I realized I'd made the, uh, um, what do you call it, the doofus thing on the blanket, um, it really stopped my motivation for finishing it. That's the perfectionist in me. So anyway, last night I picked that up and I did uh, about half a uh, way around. And so that's, I was pleased to do that because that takes discipline. So that's what I'm trying to do is get my discipline back again and do the things I want to do. For those of you who want a Bina update, he seems to be doing quite well and his manipulation skills are excellent. Um, oh, that's my colleague this morning. She's going to think I haven't come to work when she comes. Because the car won't be there. All right, guys, so Bean Bean's doing well, uh, as well as can be expected. We've let him go down the back stairs again because he actually is doing fairly well on all four feet at the moment. So, um, obviously, if it gets much colder, then we'll close it off again so that he doesn't slip. In the meantime, this is dear Mama Sal wishing you all a big, big virtual hug and uh, have fun today. Make it fun. Bye-bye for now.